Have you ever tried to solve a Rubik's Cube? It is not easy for some people while others are whiz at it. Now, over the weekend, Professor Erno Rubik, the inventor of the Rubik's Cube, visited a store called Camp in Columbus Circle. Also there, Dana Yee, one of the world's top-ranked female speed cubers. She's from Cherry Hill, New Jersey, lives in New York City, and now she joins us in the studio this morning. <laughs> we're so glad she's here, but I think it's going to embarrass us. <laughs> oh, it is going to so embarrass. <laughs> now, how did you get into cubing? You were really young at the time. Yeah, I was about 9 or 10 years mm -hmm. old, and I found a cube in my basement, and I was always like a problem-solving type of person. I always liked doing puzzles, so I was like, mm, I want to learn how to solve this, and at the time, YouTube was becoming really popular, so I found some tutorials, learned to solve it, went to a conference and then it's all downhill or uphill from here, <laughs> wow. depending on how you see it. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you the first time you attempted? Do you even remember that? Uh, probably not, but from what my parents tell me, it took me about a week to learn how to solve it on my own, and then like at my first competition, I solved it in about 40 seconds, and then just over time got faster and faster. My goodness. Whoa. Mm -hmm. All right, when did you start competing, and what competitions have you won? Yeah, so I started competing in 2010, so about 12 years ago, and I've won multiple events at competitions like the, there are different types of puzzles like 4x4, 5x5, 6x6, and Mega Minx. <laughs> and you said your, your first time in competition, yes. you solved it in 40 seconds. Yes. What is the fastest time? The current fastest time is around 3.4 seconds. My current fastest is 5.3, and at home is 4.0 seconds. All right, we want to, this is TV, so can, we want to see you solve of something. Of course, <laughs> and just to make sure that uh, nothing gets messed up, I'll let you scramble. Okay, do you want to scramble? No, you scramble. Okay. Okay. I <laughs> asked her before we got started, I was like, can I mess it up? <laughs> <laughs> All right, but wait, I need like a few seconds to really yeah. get it messy. Mm -hmm. Cindy, you want to spin it oh, a few sure, times? sure, like okay. A card game, you know, you want to <laughs> check okay, the deck? Okay, all good. All right, All right. So I'm going to go. mess it up a bit more. <laughs> oh, oh, we didn't do a good enough job. <laughs> all right. Let's see, so you always get some time to look at it, and then... We should be timing this. Wow. Wow. <sighs> but I think we did a pretty good job. I you didn't so. beat wow. record of four yeah, they are. seconds. Yes. <laughs> It's amazing. It really is. Because we discussed this before the show, and, and neither of us can could do even it. do it can in do the it. weeks. No, no, <laughs> so not why at all. is it so popular? What's think, new? Yeah, so it came out in about 1981. It's been, obviously, a lot of years since then. Mm -hmm. I think it's really popular because the concept is super simple, right? You turn the cube, and you want to get all six sides done. Mm -hmm. But even though the concept is so simple, it's quite difficult. And also, it appeals to people's problem-solving and creative-solving skills. So it's, that's why it's around all these years. All right, for all those people who are frustrated out there and can't do it, <laughs> <laughs> um, what are some tips for people to solve Rubik's mm -hmm. Cube? So unfortunately, I can't give you one tip that'll teach you how to solve okay. it, but one thing like you need to understand at the beginning is that these centerpieces don't move within relation to each other. So a lot of people try to solve it one face at a time, mm -hmm. but you actually need to solve it each layer at a time. So like top, in the middle, and then the bottom. All right, can yeah. I just very, you know, we were talking about this documentary. What is it called again? The Speed Cubers. The Speed Cubers. Mm -hmm. It's on Netflix. I watched it a while ago, and it's all about the competition. You were mm -hmm. in it. Yes, yes, I was in it for about two seconds, so <laughs> my, my claim to fame. <laughs> but it's so good. It really, I mean, it taught me about a world I know nothing about. Mm -hmm. There's a whole world yeah. out there yeah. of, of you guys, mm -hmm. and you're amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, this one, Cindy. Oh, we yeah, want right. to talk about yes. this. Yeah, this special, this is... Yeah, so of course you guys all know the original Rubik's Cube. I right. just solved it for you, kind of uh -huh. slowly, but... Uh -huh. <laughs> um, that we're working on some new stuff, so Rubik's has come out with the Rubik's Phantom. So this cube and that cube are the same. Okay, so and that's this one, all black. Yeah, if you remember those, like, pencils in elementary school mm -hmm. where you, like, rub and they change color, this is kind of the same thing. My hands are a little bit cold. Okay, so let's try mine. So this one's, this one's black as well, and you just kind of put your... warm it up. Whoa. It's working. Whoa. And then it'll change color. And then, so the point of this is you have to be really fast to do it before mm -hmm. it turns black again? Or you have to put your hand back on it to see all the colors. So these Can are for X. No. <laughs> <laughs> So these are for the, like, the next level. Sure, yeah. It provides a new spin on the original classic. All right, Dana, mm -hmm. we're so impressed with you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank this you so much for joining us. Of course. It was lovely to be here. Aww. All right, for more information on cubing and how you can get your game up, head to our website, cbsnewyork.com.